Hello again, friends, and welcome back. Uh, we, before we get into our next fantastic run, I uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, if you're looking to donate, make sure you type exclamation donate in chat to get the link to our Tiltify page where you can make a direct donation. Uh, we have some amazing incentives and bid wars for you to choose from. Uh, so make sure you get those donations in and help them get met. And I bring that up specifically because we have a uh, character choice bid war for Xenoblade Chronicles. And uh, when I give it over to Bacall, we will go into it now. But uh, yeah, so let's just switch right over. We are going to head over to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Walk Percent. Bacall, take it away and tell us what we're going to be doing. All right, welcome to uh, Xenoblade Walk Percent. Um, you don't know what this is, you probably don't because it's like the first ever like a marathon showing of whatever this is. Um, I saw someone else in the Xenoblade community do this like a few months ago and I was like, oh, you know what, that's a short meme thing, I'm gonna do it too. And then I, I did it and so I submitted it to this. Um, so we're just gonna walk for like 20 minutes and talk about Xenoblade. Because <laughs> that, that's what I do. I'm, I'm the Xenoblade person, I'm, I'm gonna walk for 20 minutes while I do that. It's not we, we did have the bid war, which I'm assuming Glimmer won because Glimmer is the best. Uh, Glimmer is absolutely the best, and it sounds like you will be walking with Glimmer. Well, I'm, I'm playing as Glimmer already. Uh, this is not the area I'm gonna be walking in. We will pass through this area, but we're not gonna be walking directly through the city. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip travel to where I'm gonna start. So this is the entire map. Please ignore all my, my, all my icons. Uh, this is my 100% file. So I'm gonna start all the way down here, and we're gonna walk all the way up through this area and go all the way up here. So th this is what we're. This is what you're getting into, chat. All, all, of, well, most of this, honestly. Some of this we won't see, uh, but most of this we will. Um, so once I hit yes here, we can start time, and then I can talk about Xenoblade for 20 minutes. Um, so three, two, one, go. Now it's time to walk. We've arrived. Um, so the Where reason why there was a bit war is because you can change characters. Um, the characters are mostly just cosmetic voice lines and stuff like that. Um, like you'll, you'll climb this like vines here, and they'll have different voice lines, um, and like the zip lines we have to do later. Um, and there are also run speed upgrades I can get, um, but I already have all of them because, like I said, this is my 100% file. Um, so I already have all of them, and the run speed upgrades don't vary between characters. Um, so this is just cosmetic stuff. Um, but also, welcome to the world of Ionios. Um, Ionios, Ionios is the setting of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, it is a fusion of Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2 worlds. Um, the world of Xenoblade 1 was Bionis and Mechanis, the world of Xenoblade 2 was Alrest. Um, and now Ionios is a fusion of those two. Um, Future Redeemed is a prequel DLC tor story for Xenoblade 3. Um, I don't know exactly how long it takes place before base game. Um, I don't think they ever actually mentioned that, um, but it is a prequel. Um, and this is in the Sent Omnia region, which is in the middle of Ionios. Um, and then toward, at the end of the DLC, the Sent Omnia region gets entirely destroyed, uh, which explains why it's not in the base game. Um, we're going through this wreckage right here of two colonies. Um, these are Colony Gamma and Colony 15, I believe. Um, these are colonies that were um, ran by two nations called Kevis and Agnes. Um, Kevis is the remnants of Xenoblade 1 world, and Agnes is the remnants of Xenoblade 2 world. Um, and they got brought into this world and are constantly forced to fight each other um, in a constant war uh, because every soldier from Kevis and Agnes is a person from the world of Xenoblade 1 or 2, um, but they are forced to only live for 10 years and then able to reach that full 10 years, they have, they're have they forced to fight and steal each other's life force, so it's a, it's a pretty dark game, honestly. Um, it's, it's a very fun game, too. Uh, but we're just going up this elevator, 
real quick, and we're going into Aurora Shelf, which you might have heard the music for a bit earlier, um, but now we get to hear more of it as we jump down here, take fall damage. <coughs> Um, nice this is an RPG, but guys. there is fall damage, um, but you can see that my health regens automatically, um, which is a lot different from any R a lot of other RPGs, uh, where you have to use stuff like healing items. Um, so we're just walking through Aurora Shelf right here. Um, we're collecting all these items. These items don't really do anything for me, um, because I've already had some items on my vial. Um, and I don't need really to collect these, but I collect them anyway because uh, I have an increased upgrade for item collection range, so I don't really have to get too close to items for them to be collected. You saw that it was so far away from me and I still got it anyway. Now it's going nighttime because there is no night, so it's like in Xenoblade. Is there any difference in like the walking percent or whatnot between day and night, or is it just kind of... It's day and it's night. <laughs> It's just day and night. Um, the music does change between day and night. There is every Xenoblade game does have day and night themes of each area. Um, so I believe once it hits 18 o'clock on, on the timer, um, on my clock under the map, it's gonna officially become night and switch to the nighttime theme for our, over our shelf. Um, there is also an area down there, but we don't go down there. Um, there is a super boss down there, which is um, a high level enemy. Um, I'm not gonna be fighting any enemies because he's busy walking. Um, but I also did submit uh, Xenoblade uh, super losses for this, and put that as backup. Um, so maybe I'll do that in the future instead of this. Um, so maybe you get to see some super boss fights in the future. So, uh, so we climb these two ladders right here, or these lines. Um, and then we get into an area called Colony 9, and Colony 9 um, Future Redeems and loves to reference a lot of stuff from Xenoblade 1. Um, I, I'd like to say that base game references a Xenoblade 2 more than 1, but Future Redeem references a Xenoblade 1 more than 2. Um, hey, what's this? So we're going into Old Colony 9, which was the home of Shulk from Blade 1. Um, Shulk is the guy on, on the left with the red cape and the long uh, blonde hair. You you could have donated for chat. I could have been I could be playing as Shulk right now, but you decided to have me play as Glimmer. Now the characters nice is Glimmer your favorite, or was it is a different one? Um, I mostly play as Glimmer or Rex whenever I play this. Um, <laughs> nice mostly I play as Rex ass. because Rex is just like completely broken in combat. Um, <laughs> the thing with Rex nice in this DLC is ass. that every time he does a critical hit, he um, recharges all of his arts immediately, or like really quickly. Um, and he has a really high cr nice critical hit rate. Ass. Like with my setup right now, I have a 65% critical hit rate on Rex. So he's just getting constant, constant pro grades. Um, so Rex is just completely broken. Um, also, we get some speed strats for walking. Everyone, um, Xenoblade 3 added a new mechanic where you can dash in combat. Um, and that is faster than your swimming speed. So what I'm doing here is I'm targeting the enemies and I'm bringing up my weapon um, to initiate combat. So you can see on my arts and stuff at the bottom. And I'm just clicking in the right stick repeatedly to dash in the water because it's faster than my swimming speed. Um, so this is, this is like the one speed strat we do in this entire run. So enjoy it while it lasts chat. And now I'm out of the water so I don't need my weapon anymore so I just put it away. And then we get into zip lines. Need to go up this long zip line. Let's go. We're going up. We're going up. And then second short speed strat, nice uh, just jump all the way down here, uh, wait for health to reach in, and then Everyone. jump down all the way in down here. And I'm sorry. Shulk died somehow. Nice I don't know how he died, but he did. Um, this area is also based around uh, Xenoblade 1 mostly. Um, I said it's a fusion of Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2. Um, this area is the Ragmos Desolation, which is the, a fusion of Gower Plain from Xenoblade 1 and Tantal from Xenoblade 2. Um, Tantal was the big snow area, but there's no snow here. Uh, but we will be getting into a snow area in a little bit after we cross this giant bridge, uh, which hey, is also an area from Xenoblade 1. We're trying to get all the way up there, chat, where the, the red icon is. Uh, 
Um, I should probably also talk about the characters. Um, the character that I'm playing as Glimmer, um... Uh, Glimmer is one of Rex's children. Um, at the end of Xenoblade 3 you find out that Rex has three kids. Um, and he becomes a Giga Chad like he is now. Um, Chaos the Giga Chad Rex. Um, Glimmer is one of Rex's kids. Um, we don't know... We don't really know about the other two. One of them might possibly be Mio from base game 3. And then one of the other kids we just know nothing about. Um, but we have Glimmer here from one of, as one of the kids. Um, and then the, the kid back there with the backpack is Nickel, who is uh, Shulk's kid. Um, so this is all about like, family and... Like, I, I guess redeeming your future, because it's called Future Redeemed. But we now now we get into the final area, the snow area. Let's go. Um, this is the Black Mountains, uh, which is more of Tantal from two, but also Valak Mountain from Xenoblade One. Um, and it, you can you can see it's a lot. It's very vertical. So instead of going horizontal, we're gonna start going vertical. Chat. We're gonna switch directions. We're switching it up on you. This. This is quite Chad, are you ready for this? You know, we, we had we had um we switched directions on Mario earlier. We were going left instead of right. Now we're going opposite of horizontal. <laughs> we're doing it again, Chad. <laughs> Go up these stairs, and then there's gonna be an even longer elevator. So if you wanna like mention a thing real quick, I'm just gonna be stuck in an elevator for a while. <laughs> Sure. Um, I will say that uh, the upcoming run, Octopath Traveler 2, uh, there was a rolling bit more that has officially opened up, and that is the voice language. It's between English and Japanese, and every so often uh, we'll check in to see which one's in the lead, and uh, you can change the voice on the fly. So if you want to hear English, if you want to hear Japanese, make sure you put your donations towards one of those languages. But uh, the, uh, though I did look up some questions for uh, for this particular run for Xenoblade Chronicles Three, and the one that intrigues me the most is um, the, the, the lore. Where was a character by the name of Klaus? Because it sounds like Klaus is kind of a big deal, and just yeah. wasn't really Treasure. in three. Nice. Um. So Klaus is dead. Oh. Basically, short, short answer, Klaus is dead. Um, the entire saga of Xenoblade 1, 2, and 3, people call it a Klaus saga. Um, at the end of Xenoblade 1, you find out that uh, before the worlds were um, created, um, it was just like normal Earth, and Klaus was a scientist working in a space station. He created, he used um, an, ex uh, an item called the Zohar, or the Conduit, the Zohar is the name from Xeno Gears and Xeno Saga, but they renamed it because of licensing stuff. Um, so he uses the conduit to basically split the world into half, into different universes, um, and that creates the worlds of Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2 as parallel universes of each other, and one half of them becomes a god in Xenoblade 1 called Zanza, and the other half of them stays on Earth in Xenoblade 2, um, and Half of his body is destroyed, um, and just it becomes like a black, like mist. Uh, Let's go. And he, he becomes known as the architect of Xenoblade 2, and he's the person who creates the entire like core crystals and blade system in Xenoblade 2. Um, and then at we'll the end of that. Xenoblade 2, he he dies because Xenoblade 1 and 2 take place at the exact same time in different <laughs> universes. Nice um, going, smartass. So. Uh, when Shulk kills cool. Zanza at the end of Xenoblade 1, Klaus also dies in the Xenoblade 2 universe. Um, so Klaus is just dead. That's oh. the short answer. That's the short version. What then? This one's... This is... Go on. This is also another area where there's a, there's a super boss. That's the highest Let's level go. super boss in Future Redeemed. No. My question, since you've you've poked my curiosity, in Zeno Gears, uh, or mentioning Zeno Gears, is that's like my favorite game in the in the universe. What all? I mean, licensing aside, like what all 
similarities exist between like Xenogears and the Xenoblade series. Like you mentioned the Zohar slash Conduit, but was there anything else pulled from like Xenogears into Xenoblade um, that you can think well, of? There's, there's an entire art book for Xenogears called Perfect Works. Which I have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Xenogears was, was originally going to be uh, part five of a six part story, and then that never happened. Um, so then Takahashi, the creator of the Xeno series, was like, I'm just gonna retell the same series, or the same story, because I want to finish it. Um, so people say that like Xenoblade 2 is a retelling of Xenogears, and then because of Torna, which was a prequel to Xenoblade 2, Torna was the very first retelling of Episode 4 of Perfect Works, um, because it's before Episode 5. Um, so there's a lot of like connections between Perfect Works and Xenoblade and Xenosaga and all that stuff. Um, I have not played anything except the Blade games, so I can't like really tell you about Xenogears and Xenosaga um, that much. I just know that there's connections. Still, that's super cool though. <laughs> um, Cosmos from Xenosaga is also a rare blade you can get in Xenoblade 2. And it's actually the rarest blade you can get in the entire game for 1 in 1,000 chance. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. So she's really hard to get. Um, you can also get Telos, but she was added later through DLC, so she's a little bit easier to get. A most uncommon item. We're going up. up, chat. Look at the zip line, it's so long. I'm so confused. This, this is not the X direction, this is the Y direction. This is this is why we're going why I can I can open the map too. See, look at this. Look at this map. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a red lightning. Um, also, this black fog that you're seeing. All this black fog is actually important to the Lord. Um, Future Connected introduces a new thing called the Fog King, um, which is the main antagonist of that story. Which is the Future Connected is the new story they added for Xenoblade 1 in Definitive Edition um, that introduces all the fog creatures which are like upgraded versions of enemies that are made in Black Fog and then that connects to Xenoblade 3 um, through lore stuff that I don't really have enough time to get into because we're almost at the end. I see some of these enemies that are, are burning looking creatures, are they neutral or do they not attack unless you aggro them or how does that work? Those are the fog creatures. Um, because I'm level 99, they don't attack me. Mm. Um, but if I was lower level, they would be more aggressive. Uh, gotcha. Um, also, this area is Prison Island from Xenoblade 1. This is a big area from Xenoblade 1 again. Um, this is where Shulk upgrades the Monado into the Monado 2. Um, that's basically all you kind of need to know about it. Um, it is also one of the final areas in the game. You come you come here originally to upgrade the Monado, and then you come here later um, to fight some of the final bosses. Um, we're almost at the end chat. We got a few more zip lines before we're at the red marker. Um, I almost jumped off the edge. Um, but once I get to the red marker, there's going to be a portal that goes into the final boss arena, and I'm not going to go into the final boss arena because uh, spoilers. Um, but once I get into the portal, there's going to be an interact prompt that says A to interact, and once the interact prompt um, shows up on my screen, I'm going to call time. A few more meters, chat. Let's go into the black portal. And there's time, there's the interact prompt. GG! We, we got the walk, chat. Look at me walking in circles. I got some oh, here's, here's Giga Chat Rex for you as a special <laughs> bonus. <laughs> okay, yeah, with a scar like that and a smirk. There's Mika Chadrex. There he is. Oh, There's the boy. <laughs> that was actually a really cool walking tour of the whole, like, the region, the universe, and everything. This, uh, as far as I know, this is the only Xenoblade game where you can actually do this because every other Xenoblade game requires you to, like, there's different places where you have to skip travel to get to different places, so you can't just, like, Manually walk on. between places, so I think this is the only one where you can actually do this. That's so cool. But yes, G as, as mentioned, chat GGs for walkies. Everybody give Nicole some awesome GGs. That was a really fun tour of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 world. And this is Ionios. 
And uh, for those interested, where can they find you on the internet? If you want to find me on the internet, <laughs> um, you can find me on at Twitch and Twitter at Pico Six and Five Four. I, you can probably tell that I like Xenoblade, so most of my stuff is Xenoblade related. I wonder why. What? There's there's definitely no Xenoblade here. You never you didn't see anything. Don't worry about it. No, absolutely not. Never heard of the game. <laughs> oh, all that's here is Giga Chad Rex. There. <laughs> it's the only thing that matters. Giga Chad Rex and his polycule. <laughs> I love it. He's just like, a, and, and of course, poses for everybody. Fitting endings to walk for cent. I got I got the walk for 20 minutes. That's that's basically it from me. Just yeah. walking. Awesome. Well, again, thank you, Pakal, for the amazing tour of, of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Walk Percent. Uh, coming up in a little bit, we have Sanjan with Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, again, we have both uh, choosing Ochet's pet and that uh, oh, language I bid war between point. English and Japanese. So make sure you hit exclamation point donate to get those donations put towards any of those bid wars. So... Stay tuned, chat. Stay cozy and...